Hello and welcome to our tutorial video on how to perform an attack on automotive targets using Riskier's next generation tool, Riskier Hurricane. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the Hurricane and how to perform the attack. First, we'll explain some concepts behind automotive security. Modern cars consist of hundreds of electronic components like sensors, actuators, communication interfaces, and others. All these components are controlled by electronic control units. These ECUs communicate amongst themselves in a network. Modern cars also have connected features, for example, allowing for remote diagnostics of a car if an accident occurs, such as the e-call system in Europe. But what if an attacker could have access to all this information in the network? In the last few years, we have been witness to a large amount of car hackings aimed at the ECUs, the vehicle's features, and even the keyless locks of modern cars. It's obvious that cybersecurity in the automotive industry is as big an issue as safety features. Many electronic control units use a communication protocols called the Unified Diagnostics Services. UDS is responsible for diagnostics on cars, data transmissions, security access check, and a lot of other services. So basically, when people get their car serviced, the car workshop can query the status of all ECUs via a standard connector and a gateway ECU. Example of UDS services are data transfer, request download or upload, read memory by address, and many others. In order to prevent malicious use of these services, ECUs verify if an operation is allowed by performing a user authentication. But how secure is that authentication? During the UDS authentication sequence, the client sends an access request to the ECU of the car. The car communication protocol will ask the client for an ID authentication. When the client submit their key, a key verification process occurs, giving access to those clients only if the key is correct. This security access process can be vulnerable to attacks, but there are many mitigations and countermeasures to make its implementation more secure. But is this enough? Have you considered the impact of performing fault injection during security access? Fault injection is the technique of changing the internal electrical states of the device by injecting glitches so that the outcome of the device will be different than expected. In the next example, we will demonstrate how to bypass the security access using Riskier's Hurricane, along with Spider and Glitch Amplifier 2 for driving the glitches. By glitching the authentication process, we can skip the key verification, get access and perform privileged and protected UDS services. This allows for further attacks, such as firmware reverse engineering or emulation, or enabling the extraction of the vehicle's UDS keys and algorithms. Let's see that in practice. We start with our automotive target, which is a real car dashboard. It contains a network of ECUs, which control its electronic components, and also a microcontroller, which uses a UDS to respond to requests and communication events. After analyzing the target, we find that if we want to get access to the dashboard, we need to attack this microcontroller. In order to perform fault injection on a target, we need to solve four issues. How to interfere with the power supply of the target and inject voltage glitches. How to communicate with the target. How to reboot the board if the glitch causes a crash. And finally, how to generate a signal that allows us to glitch at a specific point in the execution. On the back of the dashboard, you can see its ECU gateway, to which we have attached a special cable to establish a communication. This is a SUB D9 female port, which receives five inputs, and a special line which is used only for powering the microcontroller of the target. That's because we only want to glitch the component which is responsible for the communication. Lastly, we have discovered the reset line of the device.
Now, to create a voltage glitch, we will use Riskier Spider along with the new Glitch Amplifier 2. Spider is used to produce glitches which are applied to the target through a Glitch Amplifier. In this setup, we use the Riskier Glitch Amplifier 2, an advanced version of the Riskier Glitch Amplifier, which can produce even sharper and more accurate glitches than its predecessor. Note at this point that Glitch Amplifier 2 is operating as power supply unit only for the microcontroller. So when the glitch is about to be injected, the voltage is dropped and returned to normal very quickly. Lastly, Hurricane is a flexible tool to enable ECU security analysis. Its unique design performs three functions. It first provides the target with 12 volts, which is the standard operation power of automotive electronics. It communicates with the ECU of the dashboard by sending requests and generates a trigger signal to the spider to initiate the glitch. To explain the attack in detail, we will use a timeline sketch. The process starts with Hurricane providing power to all the electronic components of the dashboard except to the microcontroller. This microcontroller is powered with a 3.3 volts by Glitch Amplifier 2 and when it is active, we use Hurricane to talk to it. During the communication cycle, Hurricane sends a UDS request to the dashboard and receives back an acknowledge message. Then, Hurricane sends a protected UDS service request, such as read memory by address. Because we didn't provide a valid key, this request fails under normal circumstances. So when sending the protected UDS request, the Hurricane also sends a trigger to the spider, which in turn will generate a glitch. And when the time comes for the dashboard to perform a key verification, the spider will do the glitching. The result can be no message from the dashboard indicating that the controller crashed or reset, a wrong password message indicating that the glitch had no effect, a message containing the result of the protected request, indicating that the controller was glitched successfully. To build the setup, we start by connecting the Hurricane to the dashboard to establish the power supply and the communication. To allow Hurricane to trigger the spider, we connect the CAN1 trigger out port of the Hurricane to the spider. The spider will generate glitches on Glitch Out 1, so we connect this to the Glitch Amplifier 2 using an SMB to SMB cable. Because the input of the Glitch Amplifier is 50 ohm terminated, but the output of Spider is not, we add a 50 ohm adapter to make sure the signal is interpreted correctly. We then connect the output of the Glitch Amplifier 2 to the power line of the microcontroller on the dashboard. The dashboard needs to be reset before each operation, so we connect its reset line to Spider.
Lastly, we must connect Hurricane, Spider, and Glitch Amplifier 2 to our workstation, and to their respective power supply units. Since our setup is ready, we perform the attack using Riskier's new software for fault injection using Python, FiPy. By browsing the script for the demonstration, we can see the configuration of Hurricane and Spider, along with the UDS requests for the dashboard. We click the Run button, and the user interface appears where we can configure the range of the values for the three glitch parameters, the delay, the length, and the voltage of the glitch, along with the normal voltage of the dashboard. We select the COM ports of the Spider and the Hurricane, and the attack starts. The user interface will show the parameters of the glitch, as well as the output of the dashboard, for every glitch attempt. At the right side of the screen, we can see all the details of the perturbation, such as the percentage of successful glitches and the runtime. If the color of the perturbation is green, the glitch was not effective. If it is red, it means we had a successful glitch. The interface of FiPi gives us the option to change the parameters of the perturbation on the fly by clicking Change Parameters. Thanks for watching!